Hello there guys, it's Stephen here, back with another transfer target video. Another day, another whole host of rumours for us to plough through in intriguing fashion, to put it that way. Um, before we go on to that though, as ever, run through some of the small little tidbits of information that have been flying around the web based around Manchester City. And it's very youth academy uh, heavy um, in terms of what it can mean for the development of some of your younger players. If you haven't already heard, Man City apparently very close to sealing ownership, well half ownership, um, of Girona FC, obviously now a La Liga team, which would be huge news for our potential young stars who want to get some first team football experience at the very highest level of football in terms of La Liga, one of the actual elite leagues in the game. Uh, apparently, we're going to go into ownership with Perry Guardiola, who is obviously Pep's brother, so basically he will effectively own it, at least while Pep is here anyway. Uh, so that's very good news for us. It's good news for the young players there. It could mean we effectively have a B team in La Liga next season, which is obviously huge news for our younger players. We could actually have a B team in England next season too. If you haven't already heard, apparently we're actually going to enter the Checker Trade Trophy this season, which which is formerly the St. Johnston's Pay Trophy. We actually declined the invitation last year due to scheduling commitments with City, fearing that it'd interrupt some of the younger players' international commitments. And that's why the likes of Chelsea weren't involved. So, but this year, with all that out of the way, it looks like that we'll actually see an under-21 team play uh, in this tournament. I'd be fascinated to see this happen. I'd be fascinated to see the likes of, you know, your Brahims, if they're still there, your Matt Smiths, Davenports and all that, play against actual pro footballers, all ones who've got something to actually fight for. I know there's been a lot of criticism about this whole scheme in general a lot of lower league clubs understandably are against B team involvement because it affects their heritage and all that but I can't not be honestly excited as a Manchester City fan because I think it'd be fascinating to watch some of these young lads commit themselves against people vastly more experienced and it'd be great for their development I'll definitely be going along to a few games if this actually happens and also Danny Alves Juventus have announced that he's officially left their club so he's available on a free transfer I think I've got an idea where he's going to end up next hopefully you know, he'll be here with us lot over here wearing a City shirt because he's still a wonderful player. But let's get on to the actual transfer target. I'm going to start with a moment of intrigue, a mystery centre-back. That is the rumours going around the internet at the moment. Goal have reported that we're in for a mystery centre-back, whatever that means. Someone apparently is there that we're looking at that we're willing to spend big bucks on to uh, help ease our defensive woes. Now, this bit, obviously, is a guess. I don't know who it's going to be. The whole bunch of names being linked to City as a result of this. And unsurprisingly, a few of the big regulars have been mentioned too. I think it's probably safe to say Van Dijk won't be one of those guys. It looks like that ship has sailed long since into the sunset. And Benucci, would that actually be a mystery to any of us? I think we all know City want Benucci, and rightly so, given the fact that he's one of the best centre-backs in world football. But... I think that's not really breaking news. Nothing surprising there. And if he did become available, I'm sure we'd be banging down Juventus' door and getting him to move over to some leafy suburb in Chester somewhere. Or Cheshire even, like your Nutsford or whatever. Something like that. Uh, but who could it actually be then? Now, a lot of people are saying it could be Laporte. It could be that after he broke our hearts last year, he could have a change of mind. We could be go back in for him because he would obviously fit that left-sided centre-back kind of problem. But he hasn't had his best season but he still could be on our target of players. And maybe it could be Lucas Hernandez. Well, the only thing about this is obviously with Atletico Madrid's transfer ban, they're not really willing to sell players this summer. So it could be. And there are rumours that we've already got him lined up for 2018, 2019, which makes you think that maybe it isn't actually him. I've seen Manolas mentioned, but apparently Senate are really close to signing with Chelsea sniffing around. And there are question marks about whether he's got the ability to play in a kind of possessive football kind of style. So there isn't really... I don't really have a solid lead on this. Who do you think it's going to be? Let me know in the comments. I've seen Rudiger mentioned as well. Obviously, a few other names dotted about here and there. People saying Aldevale, but given the fact that Walker's been mentioned, I can't see that one either, really. Spurs wouldn't sell two players, never mind the one to us. That would be hard enough work as it is. For me, I mean, it can only be one person, really. The most beautiful, elegant man, an incredibly intelligent footballer, a wonderfully gifted passer, a legend with the most beautiful hair I've ever seen in a man. Ladies and gentlemen, Martin Demichelis getting back in a city shirt. Or maybe not. And on to Alexis Sanchez, this summer's big transfer saga. Now, there's been a little bit of information popping around the internet for the past 24 hours, mainly that Arsenal are terrified of losing on a free transfer. No shit, of course they are. He would be an absolutely huge loss for them. I'm sure they'd be going absolutely mad on Arsenal fan TV if he left, and I would personally love to see that. That would be absolutely sweet. But the big thing for them is if they get a replacement. Now, I can see they're obviously linked to Lacazette. Lacazette, if someone's going to tell me I pronounced that wrong, just get in the comments already. But they're linked to him quite heavily. Now, if he comes in, I think that would soften the blow a little bit with Arsenal fans, and maybe 
they just kind of understand and they write off and they get behind the whole board's message of Sanchez was playing impossibly uh, difficult in terms of the negotiations. We had no choice, our hands were tied and they'd straight paint him as some kind of villain and they'd talk about his attitude problems and they'd ship him off to City for vast amounts of money. Now apparently as well, we are the only club actually in for him. Chelsea and Bayern have dropped out the race and even Bayern have been throwing shade at Pep and Man City in particular saying, who builds a transfer policy around a 80, well, 100 million euros, 29 to 30 year old. For one, he's 28, and also he'd probably be a lot less than that. But that obviously is a dig at Manchester City. So I think this one is going to go. I think City are rightfully confident, and I think Arsenal probably shitting themselves a little bit, to be honest. I think it's whoever blinks first, and i got a feeling it's going to be the Arsenal board, and understandably, because we've got all the cards here, they've got nothing to actually hold on. So we're going to have to be patient, but hopefully it'll be worth it. And another person we're going to have to be patient for is Kyle Walker. Now, I've seen rumours today online, probably from the Times, that uh, as long as you meet Spurs' and Daniel Levy's valuation of £40 million, we will get our new right back. And uh, I think we'll do that. And that also tallies with something I've heard, that City's first bid actually was only around £30 million, which is a lot lower than what I expected it to be. But I've heard the rumours of that. And in general... 40 million, I think it's very doable for Manchester City. If that's the case, then I'm almost certain we'll get him. Given the current market, and I hate saying that, that seems like nothing these days. With players being linked to 60, 70, 80 million pounds, 40 million pounds for a homegrown player, arguably the best right back in the league last year, I could just about accept that. So, Kyle, if you're watching, mate, just, just get it done. It'll be fine. So, fingers crossed that'll be done inside the next couple of weeks. It won't be, let's be honest. It'll drag on and on. But I'm very much certain Alves and Walker are still our main targets at right back. But anyway, let's go on to the outs. This is a weird one because he isn't effectively a Manchester City player. Geronimo Rulli. Geronimo. I could say that all day. Geronimo. What a name that is. But apparently, uh, Napoli want to buy him from Manchester City. We don't even know him, but they want to buy him from us. Even though Real Sossi had owned him. We don't know basically the way it is, is that City bought uh, Rulli. And then they sold him to Sociedad, but we have a buyback clause, meaning we can buy back him many points. So Napoli have decided that they don't want to deal with Sociedad, they want to get City to buy him, so they can buy him back from City for a small profit of around six, seven million pounds. Uh, and we also confirmed via Geronimo's dad, uh, Mr. Rooley, uh, that apparently City wanted him to come to City. Uh, and actually play of old Pep said though he'd only get FA Cup games which he doesn't want that because he wants to be a starter going into the World Cup and I understand that too so we are interested in Rooley but I understand his hesitance uh, to not be a reserve keeper so whether we will sign him and then sell him to Napoli, that remains to be seen. But that would be a good move for him, potentially. Napoli are a very respected and very effective and good club these days. And so maybe we'll see Rulli come by as down to us, as an in, and then an out again. Just a quick update. As I was recording this about Rulli, a news broke, and I'm reading City Watch's Twitter, so cheers, guys, for this. Uh, apparently, the that, that option for buyback clause expires tomorrow. We only have between the 1st of May and the 30th of June every summer to actually activate it. And obviously, it's the 30th of June tomorrow, so that may not happen. So it looks likely that he'll actually stay at Sociedad unless we get our skates on very, very quickly. But yeah, anyway, so maybe he will not be coming to City uh, and then not be going to Napoli after all. And another player looks more certain to be out of the club this summer, again, is Manu Garcia. He was obviously outstanding last year for NEC Brady, and I mentioned him in the loan roundup. Go and watch that if you haven't already. But Manu looks likely to have a second season at NEC Brady, and it's probably understandable. He is really like that. The uh, NEC Brady fans rightfully love him, given his performances and getting the promotion. And given the fact that he knows the team well, uh, given the fact that it is a step up for him as well, given the fact that it's the area of and not just the second tier, um, it makes sense. Go there, go and play alongside Thierry Ambrose and Paolo Fernandez and show us what you can do, Manu. I'm almost certain that transfer will happen because it makes sense on so many levels and it'll have City's blessing, NAC's blessing and Manu's blessing, for, uh, most importantly. So I'm expecting him to go there and I'm expecting him to be a very interesting season watching how NAC unfold. I'm sure there'll be one or two more names going there as well in the coming months. And a new name for the transfer target and everyone's favourite Yorkshire meme, Fabian Delph. I really like Fabian. He's lovely, isn't he? A great bloke and uh, in general, a pretty good footballer probably problem is we don't actually see that side we just see the city tv side where he's doing jokey stuff being really likable and fun with kevin de bruyne with a bunch of kids but uh, and i do like him i really do he's a lovely person but i just wish we saw more of why we actually signed him and it seems it's going to be harder and harder and harder for him to get games now and allegedly stoke want him on loan of course they want him on loan we're a charity just giving out our players on loan but to that i can say no no if we're gonna if delve's gonna leave 
sell him. Sell him for 12, 13, 14, 15 million. He's obviously worth that given the current market. He's obviously worth probably even more than that, even being honest. And he'd do a very good job for any mid table Premier League team. But I would personally be quite happy if Fabian Delft stayed. He's got a season of fitness, hopefully, behind him. He would actually prove his worth to the squad. And I think Pep actually likes his attitude. He was very complimentary to him towards the end of the season, but then he disappeared again, unfortunately. So fingers crossed, if Fabian does stay, he plays well. If he goes, can we just sell him and none of this loan business, please? But anyway, guys, that is the end of this transfer talk. Thanks for watching again. You're all wonderful people and I appreciate your loads. If you haven't already, please do hit subscribe because it means a lot to me. And also hit the bell thing so you get a notification every single time a video goes live. And let me know if you want me to discuss on this video tomorrow or Saturday or wherever it's going to be. Anyway, guys, have a good evening and I'll see you soon.